Cristiano Ronaldo is the perfect footballer. Despite his tender age, he's captured the imagination of the football world and become arguably the best footballer on the planet. Born on February 5, 1985, in Funchal Madeira, Portugal, to parents Maria Dolores dos Santos Aviero and Jose Dinis Aviero, the future superstar started showing glimpses of his raw talent at just three years of age. Named after actor and former US President Ronald Reagan, Ronaldo's passion and natural talent for the game was obvious, and at only eight, he played for amateur team Andorinha. Just two years later, in 1995, he was signed by local club CD Nacional. After a stellar season with the club, the 12-year-old went on a three-day trial with Sporting Lisbon, who signed him for an undisclosed sum. Joining other young players at the club's football factory, Ronaldo not only had to come to grips with the new coaches, but also his new teammates, who often taunted and teased him about his Madeiran accent. Homesick and almost at breaking point, Sporting flew his mother in from Madeira in a last-ditch effort to settle him down. Luckily, the tactic worked, and at 16, Ronaldo began to blossom. His form in the UEFA Under-17 Championship brought him to the attention of the wider footballing community. In the summer of 2003, he caught the eye of Sir Alex Ferguson when Sporting beat Manchester United 3-1 in the inauguration match at the Alvalade 21 Stadium in Lisbon. Demonstrating his ability to play on both wings, Ronaldo's performance impressed the Manchester United players, who urged their manager to sign him. By mid-August, Ronaldo had joined the English Premier League powerhouse for a transfer fee of 22.2 million euros. Just over halfway through 2003, an 18-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo signed a document that would soon propel him into the international spotlight. And if the 22 million euro transfer fee wasn't enough to get fans talking, they certainly couldn't ignore Alex Ferguson's decision to put him in the coveted number seven shirt that had been worn by the likes of George Best, Eric Cantona and David Beckham. The pressure was on for Ronaldo. After 39 appearances and eight brilliant goals, including the opener in Man U's FA Cup final win over Millwall, he was named the Sir Matt Busby Player of the Year for 2003-2004. Unfortunately, however, this newfound approval was short-lived. In the 2006 FIFA World Cup, during the quarter-final clash between Portugal and England, Ronaldo was involved in an incident that saw England and Man United striker Wayne Rooney sent off. In the three seasons that followed, the young midfielder did everything within his power to win back the Red Army. His on-field performances played a major role in his team winning the Premier League in those three seasons. But although the fans had moved on from the World Cup incident, it seemed that Ronaldo hadn't. And in June 2008, rumours surfaced that he was keen to move the Spanish super club Real Madrid. To put an end to the speculation, Manchester filed a complaint with FIFA over Madrid's alleged pursuit of Ronaldo, who was still contracted to play at the English club. However, FIFA found that Real Madrid had no case to answer. They don't have any evidence because nothing happened. All there is, is what the papers say and rumours that the player seemed to want to leave United. If that were to happen and United should sell, then we would negotiate, as many other clubs would too. And even then, we would have to agree upon a price. So there need to be particular circumstances for that to happen. Despite their best efforts, Manchester United could not keep the world's best player at the theatre of dreams. Ronaldo was destined to follow in the footsteps of his hero, Luis Figo, and play for Real Madrid. But the signing certainly didn't come cheaply. In a world record deal, Ronaldo changed hands for an unbelievable 86 million euros. 
I think it's a good investment by Madrid because he's going to bring in a lot of money as well as a lot of goals. The signings of Ronaldo and Kaká are terrible. Those in powerful positions are selling to the highest bidder and those of us who watch football end up paying for it. We have so many players here that are as good as him. We should be signing them instead of lining the pockets of foreign players. Six years ago, nobody even knew who Ronaldo was. There'll be someone else like that soon, won't Everyone, they? everyone knew he was going to leave. We thought we might have left when Fergie left, but in the day, 80 million, you can't moan, can you? No one's bigger than this club, mate. And of course, Ronaldo didn't do too badly himself out of his relocation to the Mediterranean. It is believed that his contract is worth in the vicinity of 13 million euros per annum. On arrival at Bernabeu, Ronaldo was handed the number nine jersey by Madrid legend Alfredo Di Stefano. He was welcomed by 80,000 hysterical fans at a presentation at the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. His reception was another record breaker beating the previous record held by Diego Maradona, who was greeted by 75,000 fans after he was transferred from Barcelona to Napoli in 1984. Not surprisingly, Ronaldo was pretty happy with his record signing to Real Madrid. I'm very happy to be the most expensive player in the history of soccer. It gives me a sense of pride and I'll try to show that they paid the right money for me. Well, I have to, I have to say thank you to all, all supporters, my boss, my, my friends, my teammates, you know, because, you know, I've been six years in the club and of course I have friends there, good relationship with the old people there. But the people will understand my decision and the people respect that. Of course, it's a great challenge now you know, the people know my dream is to play in Madrid. And, uh, but I'm going to miss many, many things in, in Manchester, you know. But this is the life. This is my new house, uh, my new club. And I'm going to give 100% for this club. On August 29th, he made his La Liga debut against Deportivo La Caruna, which was capped off with his debut La Liga goal in a 3-2 victory. After scoring seven times in six appearances for his new club, Ronaldo's immediate future at Real looks secure. At only 18 years of age, Cristiano Ronaldo made his international debut with Portugal with a 1-0 win over Kazakhstan. Shortly after, Ronaldo debuted in his first international tournament, Euro 04. In his first appearance and Portugal's first game of the tournament, Ronaldo rose to the challenge, scoring a sizzling goal in a 2-1 loss to Greece. The young midfielder found the back of the net again in Portugal's semi-final win over the Netherlands, although they eventually lost the final to Greece. And after representing Portugal in the 2004 Summer Olympics, he went on to score an incredible seven goals in the World Cup qualifiers, the second highest in the European zone. Although Portugal's squad boasted many other star players, many Portuguese fans placed their hopes of World Cup success on the shoulders of the young Ronaldo. He seemed to thrive on the pressure, and in Portugal's second group match against Iran, he scored his first World Cup goal from a penalty. After being injured in the round of 16, he returned for their quarter-final clash with England. Keen to impress his Premier League colleagues, Ronaldo was relentless. However, his die-hard determination backfired when he was involved in Wayne Rooney's ejection from the game for stamping on Portugal's Ricardo Carvalho in the 62nd minute. English fans were outraged by Ronaldo's constant and aggressive complaints to the referee and blamed him for the red card. People always look for a scapegoat. It's not right to say it was the referee's fault. It was a clear red card, and that is how I see it. Despite the incident, Ronaldo's tournament left plenty for him to be proud of, helping his side reach the semi-finals and finish fourth overall. Although fans around the world were declaring him the best young player of the tournament, England supporters mounted an email campaign against him, and despite playing brilliantly throughout the tournament, he failed to win the FIFA Best Young Player award. 
Leading into Euro 2008, Ronaldo looked to be finding the best form of his career, scoring eight goals in qualification. Since Portugal had reached the final of Euro 04, anticipation had been building towards the start of Euro 08, with talks of Portugal winning their first ever European Championship. However, after dominating their group, they lost to Germany 2-3 in the quarter-finals. Ronaldo had scored just one goal for the tournament. With the 2010 FIFA World Cup on the doorstep, Portugal have been struggling to qualify with only a few games remaining. They need to finish no lower than second in their group to have any hope of playing in South Africa in 2010. Whatever their chances, their campaign will be led by Ronaldo, who was named captain by new Portuguese coach Carlos Quiroz. A veteran of 65 caps, he's found the back of the net on 22 occasions. Despite being the perfect role model on the pitch, off the field, Cristiano Ronaldo has room to improve. Over the course of his short career, the Portuguese winger has been reportedly connected to sleazy rendezvous in Rome, car incidents, wild nights out, and more recently, a racy encounter with Hollywood socialite Paris Hilton. Whilst Manchester United and Real Madrid officials were finishing off the final details of Ronnie's 86 million euro transfer, he was spotted in Los Angeles, getting down and dirty with Paris in the exclusive club My House. A couple of bottles of champagne and a few steamy dances later, the couple apparently left the club and headed to the Hollywood Hills home of Paris's sister Nikki. Ronnie was snapped leaving at 5am, sporting a satisfied grin. In recent years, Ronaldo has also been linked to English TV personality and lingerie model Gemma Atkinson, as well as talk show host Merchi Romero. In April of 2008, he found himself in the headlines after flying to Rome for a night out. While he was there, he supposedly took a trip to the city's seedy red light district, where he arranged for two female escorts to come back with him to his hotel. Just four months earlier, he'd been linked to a wild party involving Portuguese teammate Nani and Brazilian colleague Anderson, where five call girls were hired. The women involved were keen to sell their story to the English tabloids after their unforgettable night with the three young soccer superstars. Then in early 2009, Ronnie was lucky to walk away from a car crash that left his 200,000 euro Ferrari a virtual write-off. Although he did finally transfer to Real in 2009, many footballing experts were impressed with the integrity and determination Ronaldo had displayed in the wake of the Rooney incident. By playing on at Old Trafford for another two years and proving that what happens on the field stays on the field. My relationship with him is great and I think after uh, the, this, I think I'm more mature, I learn a lot with this and now I'm, I feel very good, I feel, I feel, feel good. After the game when you have your head hot, sometimes you, you say something you don't, you don't want to say, but after when you realise the real thing, you say, Maybe I think bad, uh, these people is good, the club is fantastic and everything is sorted. I speak uh, with the right people and these people say you are in the right club, you are with the right people. Not all of Ronaldo's off-field exploits end up in the gossip pages. Along with one of his sisters, he has opened two Portuguese fashion boutique stores under the name CR7. And in 2009, Ronnie showed the world his charitable side by donating £100,000 to the hospital that treated his mother after she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the world's most idolised footballers. But even the world's most popular footballer still finds inspiration in his own heroes and idols. Former World Player of the Year and ex-Portuguese teammate Luis Figo was Ronaldo's hero when growing up in Funchal Madeira, Portugal. 
playing a similar game off the right wing, his inspiring contribution to the game has seldom been marred by controversy. Often compared to the great Eusebio, Figo is renowned for being a gentleman both on and off the field, and his career path provides a shining example for young players like Ronaldo to follow. Well, I think uh, I make a decision to to retire in the national team. So right now, I don't think about it. About that, uh, I have to support them then uh, out of the pitch. So that is my idea, and it's more important right now. With close to 20 individual playing honours, including FIFA World Player of the Year in 2001 and Portuguese Footballer of the Year on six consecutive occasions, Luis Figo will be best remembered for his transfer between Spanish rivals FC Barcelona and Real Madrid in 2000. The transfer was so controversial that upon returning to FC Barcelona, he received an almighty roasting, where fans heckled and threw all types of objects at him, including a pig's head. Another influential figure in Ronaldo's career is the man that recruited him from Portugal to play in the world's most watched football competition. Sir Alex Ferguson has played a huge role in the young footballer's career and there is no doubt that Ronaldo will be forever grateful for all the help and advice Ferguson gave him over the six seasons he spent at Old Trafford. Sir Alex also gave his precious young protege plenty of praise in the media. Well, I think that we have seen the progress of Cristiano this season. It's been absolutely fantastic. I think he's, to my mind, is at the moment is the best player in the world. And I think, you know, you can't say that lightly, given there's some fantastic footballers there. Not long after transferring to Real Madrid, Ronaldo told the press that he's been my father in sport, one of the most important factors and most influential in my career. I'll always have great affection for him and he will occupy a special place in my heart. Since Sir Alex took the reins at Manchester United in 1986, he has won the Premier League title a record 11 times, the FA Cup five times, the UEFA Champions League twice and the FIFA World Cup in 2008. Former teammate Wayne Rooney also played a part in shaping Ronaldo into the dominant goal scorer that he had become. Although they had their moments after the 2006 World Cup, there is no doubt that they overcame their differences and thrived on each other's brilliance to lead the Red Devils to three consecutive Premier League titles. Since his move to Real Madrid, Ronaldo has found plenty of inspiration in his new teammates. There's Real Madrid veteran Raul Gonzalez, who has been playing for the Whites since 1994. Appearing over 500 times for the club and scoring more than 200 goals, Raul is widely regarded as one of the best Spanish forwards of all time. New recruit Kaka also provides a rich source of inspiration. The Brazilian midfielder was part of the Brazil side that won the 2002 FIFA Cup. He has won the FIFA World Player of the Year, as well as the Ballon d'Or in 2007. Although both players make no secret of their love for the spotlight, Kaka was keen to emphasise there would be no time for one-upmanship. I don't know what his number is yet, but there won't be rivalry between Cristiano and I. I think we are compatible players and we will be able to play together without any problem. And outside the pitch there will be no type of rivalry between us, because we are both experienced soccer players, winners, and no kind of rivalry exists. With Ronaldo on one wing and fellow FIFA world player Kaka on the other, the potential for Real Madrid seems infinite. Opponents would have their work cut out to stop one of these star players, let alone both. Cristiano Ronaldo is the ultimate marketing machine. Not only does his on-field brilliance encourage younger fans to mimic his game style and fashion sense, even fully grown men have been known to go weak at the knees upon brushing shoulders with the Portuguese prodigy. So what does this mean in terms of marketability? Well, quite simply, companies from any industry in all corners of the globe will pay big bucks to have the young star endorse their product. With brands the likes of Suzuki and Banco Espirito Santos already on the payroll, lubricants giant Castrol recently approached Ronaldo to become its global ambassador. Nike is another of Ronaldo's major sponsors. 
However, his move to Real Madrid, which is sponsored by Nike's major rival Adidas, has caused its fair share of controversy. While Ronaldo continues to wear his Nike footwear, Adidas is putting a lot of pressure on Real officials to take him to task. Club president Florentino Perez has reportedly asked Adidas to renegotiate the club's sponsorship deal. However, Adidas and Real Madrid must surely be happy with the Ronaldo-led spike in shirt sales. It is believed that through sales of the new number 9 jersey alone, that Real will recoup the massive 80 million euro fee that it shelled out to buy Ronaldo. Although some fans felt the signing was a bit overpriced, they were confident that it was a good investment. It is a bit expensive, but if Madrid want to play the best football, they're going to have to pay for the best players, like Kaká and Ronaldo. I think that he is going to bring a lot to Madrid, and with all the sponsorship money he will bring in the end, he will be a free signing. With Real Madrid paying a rumoured salary of over 10 million euros per season, Cristiano Ronaldo has become one of the highest paid players in the world, doubling his salary at Manchester United. As of the beginning of the 2009-2010 season, the top four highest contracted players are playing in La Liga. Yet to reach his prime, Ronaldo's trophy room already resembles that of a footballer who is coming to the end of an illustrious career. Ronaldo has earned over 30 individual awards, including the PFA Young Player of the Year in 2006-2007, the UEFA Club Footballer of the Year in 2007-2008, and Barclays Player of the Season in 2006-2007 and 2007-2008. In 2007-2008, he won the Barclays Golden Boot, as well as the European Golden Shoe. While at Manchester United, Ronaldo helped his side to three Premier League titles, one FA Cup and a memorable UEFA Champions League victory in 2007-2008. With the FIFA World Player of the Year award, the Ballon d'Or and the FIFA Pro World Player of the Year all to his name before his 25th birthday, Ronaldo could break all records. Still in his mid-twenties, he is yet to reach the pinnacle of his footballing potential. In the eyes of some of the game's most knowledgeable insiders, he is already well on his way to becoming one of the greatest footballers of all time.